You still here? Don't bother someone else with this, son. You really want to know, kid? Why? You want to play a policeman or something? I'm sure you have it in your records, so it won't hurt if I have it in mine. In my records, it's just a tattoo, as it should be in yours. Ah, to hell with you. Suit yourself as to what you're going to do with it. Off the record, though. Such tattoos are often connected to a man named Mr. Niccolo Bernadotti. Bernadotti, you say? A respectable businessman in Scaladio. His company imports goods and wines, and smuggles everything that can be smuggled between the colonies and the mainland. His people can be identified by an obscure tattoo. Just like the one over there our friend has. But these are all merely rumors, you see. If Mr. Bernadotti was a criminal, he'd be in prison now. Or hanged. Right? You're disturbing a hornet's nest here, son. At least some of your kind have a hut. Thank you again. Terrible events are behind that canvas, Sherry. I owe you a lot, Mr. Holmes.
I'll be right here. Excuse me, just one question. I would never refuse a nobleman, but I know nothing, sir. Do you know anything about this? Please, don't get angry, sir. But I know nothing about this, I swear to you. You obviously haven't thought this all through. Or are you just annoying these people on purpose? Have you found anything helpful? Have you found anything helpful? Help me, please. Sorry, but I never heard of this. Can you satisfy my curiosity? Sir, I don't know. Try asking someone else. You obviously haven't thought this all through. Or are you just annoying these people on purpose? If you're here on matters of signing up for military service, come back tomorrow. Our department needs to straighten out some business. Why are you staring at me like I'm a Madame Tussauds figure? Didn't you hear what I just said? You blame yourself for what you did. Won't be any good unless you confess to me, so I'll try to be polite. What sort of did are we talking about? Are you from the press? I'm here because of Nayla. Who? You don't remember her name. Lad, if you won't tell me where you came, I'll call for someone here to sort you out, if you get my meaning. Do you recognize this man? Hmm. We definitely look alike. But you have the wrong person. Really? Then you won't mind if I pass this along to the newspaper? All right. All right. Is this about money, as you said in the letter? What kind of sum are we talking about? I've never written a single word to you. Bribery, not my style. So, that letter, it wasn't from you? Well, it appears that more and more people in the city are finding out about your despicable hobby, doesn't it? You're in the clutches of justice, and very soon they will squeeze you. It's in your best interest to cooperate. Fine. I suppose now we have a nice long talk. Do you drink, Mr...? Sherlock Holmes. And I do not. Shame. 
All the best discussions are accompanied by a glass of whiskey. But out of respect for you, I won't drink either. Respect? That's an unusual word in your mouth, Mr. Where are my manners? My name is Thomas Norton, a British envoy in Cordona on a military mission. So, where do we start? You mentioned blackmail. Tell me about it. All right. A couple of days ago, I received an anonymous letter. It said that in the art gallery at Caravansary, there exists a painting that incriminates me. The blackmailer made it clear that if there is a painting, then a photograph exists too. And I should be wary of what it might do to my reputation. What does the blackmailer want from me? Money, of course. What else do such people want? Needless to say, I don't remember anyone taking photographs at the party. Up until the last moment, I hoped he was bluffing. But he wasn't, as you've just proven to me. Show me the letter. I burnt it as soon as I read it. I've left enough evidence. There's no need for any more. So, let's return to the beginning. What happened at the party? I vaguely remember that night. As usual at such parties, you meet people, you talk with them, they invite you to spend some time alone with them. What can I say? I got myself mixed up with the wrong company, and somebody must have mixed some psychoactive substance in my drink. After that, it's all blurry. I completely lost my sanity. I made a terrible mistake which I regret deeply. You don't say? Do refugee girls often appear on the menu at those types of parties? It's... rather rare. So you didn't attend the party to engage in an exotic experience involving a vulnerable woman unable to accuse you of assault? I would never have planned such a terrible thing. What happened was just... bad circumstance. The painting that depicted you in the image of the devil was stolen by a mercenary. Did you have anything to do with it? I might be a rotten person, sir, but hiring criminals for illicit purposes is not in my daily schedule. And buying the painting in an attempt to hide the crime, is that on your daily schedule? What would you do in my situation? I would never put myself in such a situation. You're young. I could never have imagined myself in my current position. Yet, here I am in front of you. We all make mistakes, Mr. Holmes. And I'm no exception. Boniface Mercurio, does the name mean anything to you? He's an artist, right? The one responsible for the painting that compromises you. I found him dead in his room. Oh, that is bad. Wait, you don't think that I have anything to do with this? You had motive to kill him. Maybe I did, but listen. I know how this looks, but murder? That's on another level. I had thoughts that this Mercutio... Mercurio? Well, him, yes. I thought he could have been the blackmailer but I was too afraid to make any hasty decisions. There were plenty of ways to fail by making a move, so I chose to wait, to see what he would do next. You have to believe me. I don't believe people, I believe evidence. Then look at the evidence. Mr. Holmes, I've built my entire career on hard work and uncompromising dedication to the Crown. I made a mistake, but I'm not a villain from some cheap adventure fiction. By putting me behind bars, you will benefit precisely no one. Rotting in prison is the least you deserve, but I have a better idea. You will make amends and help the ones you hurt. Use your connections to help patriate the refugees. Find them decent homes. Give them jobs. There must be a meaning to your position and my decision. Yes, all right, I can do that. So, will you give me the photograph now? That's not all. Naylor deserves the very utmost of what you can do. Help the girl? I can't risk the press paying extra attention to her. I will do anything except that. I need to think this all through. Don't do anything foolish in the meantime. What makes you think you can decide what's best for these people? Such is the arrogance of British imperialism. I take your point.
What a lovely man this Bernadotti is, eh, Sherry? Can't wait until we get to meet him. A fresh newspaper? I wish you a pleasant... It seems they're not expecting guests. I won't wait for an invitation, John. Excuse me, just one question. Oh, I'm sorry, but that's beyond my knowledge.
Is this familiar to you? Sorry. We don't see much here. These workers don't look like your average Cordona folk. They're refugees from the camp. Is this familiar to you? Sir, I would prefer not to talk to you. Porcelain friend for every child. Excuse me, just one question. Nah, never come across anything like this. Time to check your who, what and what, Sherry. Who are you asking about what and dressed as what? An essential remedy against sea scourge on That's Asia. our way in, Sherry. Shipped from Cape Town. The wine route from colony to colonies. Help me, please. Please, step back. I'd rather my colleagues didn't see us together. May I ask for your assistance? Please, step back. I'd rather my colleagues didn't see us together. You obviously haven't thought this all through. Or are you just annoying these people on purpose? May I ask for your assistance? Nah, never come across anything like this. Hey, yo, this is private property. You lost something. Good day, sir. I've been sent by City Hall to see Mr. Bernadotti about... Mr. Bernadotti isn't seeing anyone. You have three seconds to walk away or you'll never walk again. Capito? It's in Mr. Bernadotti's best interest to... One... Listen, the man Bernadotti sent to... Cho! I did try to resolve this peacefully. I'm coming. Ah. I couldn't miss the party. <coughs> ah. No more crime for you until next month. Take a rest, my friend. I thought we were against murder. No more crime for you. The snuff's ready. Good day. Don't bother moving. Give him the pepper snuff. The snuff's ready. Give him the pepper snuff. Simple. The snuff's ready. Take a rest, my friend. Give him the pepper snuff. Time to knock this guy out. Don't bother moving. You've lost.
You've disappointed me so much, Sherlock. Jerry, look! This seems familiar. No, sir. Don't hurt me. It's all right. I won't harm you. Like you didn't harm the folks on the way here. Masks. Traditional for the Chokwe people of Central Africa. A Dogon statue from West Africa. A century old at least. VH Grindley Flow Blue Tableware. This is what lies behind the facade of Bernadotti Company Limited. Let's see what's hidden there. Vogel's stolen painting. Isn't it curious how it developed into a much more interesting case? Vogel's stolen painting. Isn't it curious how it developed into a much more interesting case? An amazing piece of culture. I imagine many collectors and museums would be interested in having it. Don't come any closer. One step and I'll shred you to pieces. Go ahead. Make my day. Right, so. Yes. Yep. Well, uh, excuse me, sir. I, I think I hear. I've got to. It's better I leave. Whoa. Oh, wow. That was as if somebody put my words in your mouth. So much like me. This is it. This is where all the magic happens. Family. Spare me. I 
I suppose it's Mr. Bernard Dotty with our fine governor. Eighteen seventy-five. It's taken a few years back. John, how many people in Cordona have a photograph with the governor, do you think? You definitely don't have one. This is it. This is where all the magic happens. So, you've cut through all the guards just to talk to me. Then come here. Sherry, don't you think this office suits me? Whenever you're ready, I'd hate to intrude. Bad news. The thug you sent to the refugee camp only succeeded in stabbing himself. His next and final journey will be to the morgue. Hold your horses. Who the hell are you? Sherlock Holmes. And you are Niccolo Bernadotti, a smuggler, kidnapper, and notorious cutthroat, among other things. Few men would dare waltz into my office and address me like that. You are either overconfident or unintelligent. This is private property. Give me one reason why I should not shoot you on this spot. I am sure my friends at the station would call it self-defense. Mr. Bernadotti, do you know the name Boniface Mercurio? I do not. Mercurio was a local artist. Recently, a man broke into his apartment, ransacked the place, and killed him. The thief was looking for something. You are testing my patience, boy. In a moment, the connection will reveal itself. As I said, your man was found dead in the refugee camp. He was there to kidnap a woman, but the other refugees intervened to try and save her. The ensuing scuffle resulted in the man's accidental suicide. He sported the same tattoo as your men in this building. In fact, it also bears a resemblance to the one on your neck. Care to explain what business your man had with this woman? You have no idea what you are talking about. I can assure you this was no kidnapping. The refugees in the camp are on edge. What happened there is a tragic accident, one I am not responsible for. For what reason was your man there if not to abduct her? Why would I answer? You are yet to justify your presence in the slightest. I was hired, privately, to investigate the recent theft of a painting from an art gallery. My investigation led me to a man from your organization, and thus, to you, Mr. Bernadotti. That is quite a stretch. 
Why would I need to steal a painting when I could buy any while I wanted? Interestingly enough, I spotted the stolen painting in your storeroom. I buy and sell a lot of things, Mr. Holmes. Unfortunately, if this is true, it is not the first time I have been sold stolen merchandise. I presume you were hired by the owner of the gallery. Tell them to contact me, and we'll sort out the situation. So, this painting is why you broke into my office. So many words, so little action. When you barged into my office, Mr. Holmes, I got the impression you wanted to talk business. Now I see you had come just to talk. Tell me exactly what you want, or get out. It was necessary groundwork for what comes next. I have enough evidence to conclude that the gallery thief, the artist's killer, and the dead man in the camp are all the same person. Your time is almost up, Mr. Holmes. Before you draw your gun, there is one final detail I am yet to mention. The young woman your man was tasked to collect from the refugee camp had been defiled at a perverse masquerade party. That violation was captured in a photograph by Boniface Mercurio and used as a reference for his painting. The photo shows the attacker's face. Finally. That's why you're here, Mr. Holmes. You have the photograph. It is what your man was after when he broke into Mercurio's apartment, and it is what you're after too, isn't it, Mr. Bernadotti? You have the photograph with you. How much do you want for it? I am not naive enough to carry it with me, but I am yet to decide what I shall do with it. I know the man in the photo is a British envoy. What interest do you have in his downfall? I must admit, I am rather impressed by how comprehensively you have pursued this matter. And so, you deserve the honest answer. My business dealings are often arduous in their bureaucracy. A man in his position, willing to look the other way, could ease my work significantly. In return, I will make sure no one looks his way either. A favor for a favor. Also known as blackmail, the modus operandi of any true professional. It was not originally my idea. Mercurio set things in motion, extorting the envoy for the most trivial of ends. Money. In response, the envoy hired my man to retrieve the painting and the photograph, eliminating Mercurio's leverage. I only learned the whole story after the artist was killed in his home. And rather than extricate yourself, instead you took over Mercurio's venture. It fell into my lap. As a businessman, I simply seized the opportunity. Now, how much do you want for the image? I could not help but appreciate the collection of smuggled artifacts in your storeroom. You have rather diversified your business. Oh, how high and mighty of you, Mr. Holmes. Not all smuggling is immoral. I pay generous rates to developing cultures and spread their culture to eager buyers. And furthermore, I supply many immigrants with a taste of home. A very convenient way of thinking. I have traveled wildly, Mr. Holmes. I've seen people in far-flung lands for whom my services are a lifeline. Without them, they would starve. The tax on cargo is often so absurd that it would be more profitable to simply sink your ship than dock it in the harbor. And trust me, I am speaking from experience. Why did you send your man to remove the woman from the camp? Without a photograph, her testimony was the next best thing. Securing her was in everyone's interest. Victims and witnesses all too often disappear. I thought the girl was cipher with us. I did not anticipate what would happen at the camp. I saw refugees from the camp at your warehouse. They work for you. I have made certain arrangements with City Hall and the police. Thanks to me, refugees can work and be paid. It's a pathway to freedom. And how much do you save by capitalizing on their cheap labor? I have heard no complaints. They seem happy just to get out of that slum. Why should I give you the photograph? Just name your price. What if my price were not money? You claim to have connections, Mr. Bernadotti. Perhaps you could improve conditions for the refugees. Give them a chance for a better life. 
Ha! <laughs> I do have connections, Mr. Holmes, but help the whole camp? You are asking too much. I could, however, make arrangements for one person. The woman who was violated will have her own home, outside the camp, solely for her and her child. She will no longer be a refugee, but a princess. That I can guarantee. Is that really possible? It will be neither fast nor easy, but I can do it. She deserves it, don't you agree? And as for her abuser, he will serve me, as much as he deserves. So in your plan, everybody will be given their due. Especially you, Mr. Bernadotti. Seems like a fair deal, no? I doubt anyone could offer you better. Simply give me the photograph, and the world becomes a better place. I give you my word. The front door's now open, sir. You can leave through it. If you want, of course. Treasure maps from the Governor. Find eight and come back for more. Have you thought it all through? Almost. The refugees, what will happen to them? Well, I wouldn't be standing here in this fancy office if I didn't know how to pull the right strings. In fact, it's the only thing I know. The local governor will receive a decree signed by the House of Lords containing a request to patriate the refugees in the name of the Crown. From where did you gain such influence? I never asked you how you found the photograph. So don't ask the magician how he performs his tricks. But how can I believe you? Ugh, I presume you do believe in my selfishness. The initiator of the refugee salvation will be none other 
than the British envoy, saviour and protector of those in need. It's a win situation for me too. Now, what about the photograph? You deserve to be punished, but the greater good is what matters here. I won't bargain it for justice for Naylor. I'm glad that this situation is over. It will be over when you settle the matter of the refugees. You have my word, Mr. Holmes. Mr. Holmes, you've returned. Have you uncovered anything new about the theft? I've brought news, but not all of it will please you. Fill me in, Mr. Holmes. I won't shoot the messenger. I tracked down Boniface Mercurio. I presume he wasn't delighted about the situation. He was not having a good day on account of his murder, killed in his own flat by the same person that stole his painting. Oh, sweet Mercurio. Perishing in the pursuit of his art. How apt. I will miss his exceptional sense of humor. I located the thief, but found him rather cold. He was tight-lipped about the painting, too. Huh, he's dead. How very droll, Mr. Holmes. Warren presumes you were not responsible. It was an accident at the refugee camp. He impaled himself on his own knife. Life is nothing if not cruel and capricious. What about the stolen painting? Have you located it? I found the painting, but I could not retrieve it. Well then, where is it? In Bernadotti's office. Bernadotti? That shady businessman? Why would he steal it from me? I'm afraid you'll have to ask him yourself. Hmm. I take it you found something more then. What happened to your crusade of truth? Was it not that important after all? No truth will satisfy you, Mr. Vogel. It was not an attack, Mr. Holmes. If you've chosen not to tell me, I respect your intention. But it is just rather boring, isn't it? It is what it is. Well, now that we've resolved all of our outstanding matters, I have a gift for you. I took the liberty of having it delivered to Stonewood Manor. I am told it belonged to your mother. And what exactly have you sent me? Frankly, I'm not sure how to answer that. I trust you'll know. Previously, you mentioned there may have been more to my mother's passing than consumption. It appears you were right. Oh, dear. I had hoped to be wrong. She was unstable, mentally unwell. She required sustained specialized treatment, but her madness persisted. I knew that Violet had disappeared from the public eye, but had no idea of her suffering. I cannot imagine what you're feeling. I'm fine. Thank you, Mr. Vogel. I am curious to see what you have procured. Nice Oriental rugs at a good... Marhaba. It's a good day for a purchase. May your purchase bring you joy.
Well done, Sherry. The hall now looks much as it did in our youth. Brings back fond memories. Another one. There must be something important behind it. I can feel it. Home sweet home, Sherry. Looks like it was damaged by a blunt object. Another one. There must be some... Behind it, I can feel it. Another one. There must be something important behind it. I can feel it. Bizarre object, and yet oddly familiar. Yes. A room full of curiosities and artifacts. I think I can find it in the manor. Sherlock. So, you continue to pursue the imaginary. I had hoped you might have got all this out of your system by now. Mycroft. What are you doing here? Get out of my house! It's my house, actually. I've come to bring you back. I have no interest in returning, let alone with you. I know you lied about Mother all these years, claiming she was merely ill, but she was unstable. She never had tuberculosis. She was not recuperating, but mentally deteriorating, and you never once thought to tell me. How dare you? I shall not indulge this petulant tantrum. You can just tire yourself out and then slink back to London with your tail between your legs. Just tell me everything! I'm an adult now. I... Show me the basic courtesy of an explanation. You know I will find out eventually. The goal was stability, and that's what you got. The right thing for everyone was to try and move on from her passing. The consequences of one's actions determines what is right or wrong. Yes, exactly. The ends justify the means. After leaving Cordona, Sherlock, you had a normal childhood. In London, I was able to support you, guide you, shape you into a fine and productive young man. You have so much potential, so much to offer society. But that's not the end. Now I've found the truth, and it has shattered everything I knew about her, about you, and about myself. I feel unstable because of you. Your actions were not justified. Lying never is. Oh, grow up, Sherlock. It was a white lie which has as much use in the realm of the interpersonal as the international. 
It is time you come to accept that some things are bigger than yourself. Oh, you are full of it. You like to pretend you care about the big picture, but it's just an ego trip. You like knowing more than others. You like greasing palms and rubbing shoulders with the rich and powerful. You like having eyes and ears everywhere. The fact it helps the nation is incidental, because all you care about is yourself. It's true. I have agents everywhere, including Cordona. If you weren't so damn stubborn, you'd realize that means I'm only here for you. Do exercise some restraint, Mr. Holmes. Find the who's and we'll handle the why's. A manner all to ourselves. Can you believe? The local justice system in all its glory. Another one. There must be something important behind it. I can feel it. Another one. There must be something important behind it. I can feel it. Home sweet home, Sherry. This portrait was painted some time before my father's death. I would guess it's the only depiction of him that remains. Another one. There must be something important behind it. I can feel it. Another one. There must be something important behind it. I can feel it. I remember returning home with a pair of perfect sticks. We wanted to turn them into training swords. Oh, that's right. We stood there, frozen, staring at something huge in the main hall. It was a giant aquarium with a living mermaid in it. Impossible, it must have been something else. Oh, of course, that mortifying hoax presently taking up space in our front yard. Well, fine. Your memory's better than mine. But I'm sure we started examining it immediately. And someone else was around, too. It was my mother. She asked what I thought of the artifact. You were really concentrating and holding something in your hand. I inspected it with a magnifying glass and was able to confirm it was made of two different skeletons. The mermaid was a fake. And so it was time to smash the thing. Your mother took a hammer and... <laughs> Slow down, John. That's not how it happened. I remember other people joined us.
The workers took the artifact and placed it into the Cabinet of Curiosities. It became part of Mother's collection of fakes. She always said that the truth lies in the details. This mermaid helped me to learn that. Ah, yes, my mother's studio. She was an authenticator, and this was her cabinet of curiosities. I never saw the point. What does it matter if some artifact is real or not? It still exists. I remember this cosy blanket. It was perfect for a... Wigwam! Oh, that was a joy to build them. Imagining ourselves as wayfarers on the other side of the world. Watkinson and Holman, Chapter 1, by Wallace Deorum. Oh, Mycroft. He always acts so serious, but then reads tripe like this. John, if I remember correctly, you couldn't put this book down. Another fake Holy Grail. Its owner claimed to be the heir of King Arthur. Scarcely believable. He also insisted a deadly rabbit was hunting him. This photo caused a lot of fuss. My mother spent some time to prove it was a fake. 1852, Bingley, West Yorkshire. Look, it's Roger. This jolly old man's well preserved. He even looks refreshed. I doubt he drew much interest at the auction. That's for the best. I'd be upset if he fell into the wrong hands. Look, it's Roger. This jolly old man's well preserved. He even looks refreshed. A full collection. It's somehow so satisfying. A full collection. It's somehow so satisfying. So many calling cards. Mycroft liked to keep useful people at hand. Officer Luciano J. Placido. Reliable and driven. I recognize Mycroft's handwriting. This drawer was always closed. Only Mycroft knew how to open it. I remember we tried to break it open and spy on him, but alas, had no success. Maybe today's the day. Oh, Sherry. A full collection. It's somehow so satisfying. The so-called mummy of a Persian princess. The defrauders did good work, but missed one small detail. It's the mummy of a man. And this one was brought from a German museum. They claimed it belonged to Vikings. Nonsense, of course. Vikings never had horns on their helmets.
Clearly, it was deliberately torn. I wonder why someone would do that. The Tulpa. Studies in Tibetan mentalism. An impressive number of bookmarks. Someone was rather obsessed with this subject. The full plate armour of Sir Robert Saunford. I was told my father won it in a wager. Armour is armour, but look at his sword. Oh, how badly I wanted to wield the blade. Mother said this was among the hunting Maybe trophies of a Scottish Viscount. Pistol. So he tried to persuade everyone that his forest was inhabited by these beasts. It would have been thrilling. One of the most ridiculous fakes true. I ever saw. Its owner insisted it was a polar bear. He thought the white paint on the brown fur wasn't noticeable. was always closed. Only Mycroft knew how to open it. <laughs> Carefully opened. Carefully opened. Dated 24th of April, 1869. starting to remember something. I remember these. We used them to spar together until Mycroft found out and forbade us from using real weapons.
I used this ladder to look at the top shelf, right? On the day of Mother's breakdown upstairs. Right you are, Sherry. We heard a noise. I can't recall of exactly what. And we didn't have a great view from behind the statue. Books and papers from the table somehow ended up on the floor. Now it's coming to the surface. I feel it. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. Come on, Sherry. Let's go outside. Wait. Did you hear that? Come here, Sherry. You call this progress? Charlatan. Amateur. I'm not letting you anywhere near my mother again. So there was a quarrel between them. I heard a noise in the hall. Let's check it out. One of the most ridiculous fakes I ever saw. Its owner insisted it was a polar bear. He thought the white paint on the brown fur wasn't noticeable. Sherry, look. We've got a parcel here. Hurry up and let's see what's inside. An invitation that comes with a mask. We can't miss this, Sherry. <laughs> 